Hello. Booker, good to see you. Are you kidding me? Great to see you. Thanks for inviting yeah. me on your morning run. I'm so psyched. What Thank a you. Day for yes, it. great. Let's go. So you are a pretty daily runner. I have a streak going now. Next week, we'll, I'll break through the 500 days in a row of running. Wow. So yes. you run cold, rain, sleet. You're like, a, you're like the postal service. I have run on days that used to be excuses not to run for me, but now I get this sense of triumph. How long can I keep the streak going? And what made you start running? I started, a, I guess, now almost two years ago with this frustration about the political dialogue and the, you know, the tension growing in our country. I think we we're suffering from a severed belonging, our sense of well-being and connection. And I realized that maybe I can do something for myself and be an example, live, the, live my truth as best as possible because so much of our well-being is connected to our daily habits, our ability to connect. And because it's, it's a mental health uh, thing for you as well as physical. It is definitely a mental health thing for me. It's helped me not only improve my own health, but also my overall sense of well-being, sense of personal triumph. It bleeds into other areas of my life. And, you know, just to be clear, all these health statistics that are stunning for Americans, they're particularly stunning for black Americans. Mm -hmm. We have, black men have, uh, next to Native American men, uh, the lowest life expectancy in America. Mm -hmm. And I'm now in my 50s and seeing so many black men start to die or be debilitated. So, look, I fight for policy, fight for legislation, but I think the larger fight for our country now is to return to a sense of connection, belonging, well-being. And I, I'm very, I think our current political culture is toxic. And so I'm gonna continue to fight for what I believe in, but I decided to turn my social media accounts over significantly to things I know that are a little above politics mm -hmm. and speak to our common humanity and what I think are some of the larger causes of our country, which is how can we as a nation be losing in so many ways that sense of common cause, that sense of connect connection, whereas my hero, John Lewis, says that sense of a beloved community. Mm -hmm. Good run. You rock. <laughs> I can't believe I reached your yeah. <laughs> So I want to feature you on a Corey story. I'm so honored <laughs> yes. as a viewer and you, follower. And as an inspiring person to me, and I'm sure to so many other people. Thank you. So I'm wondering you. if you have an inspiring story or quote or something that, uh, that you can inspire folks with. So yes. I think a lot about advice my mother has given me. The piece of advice she gave me the night before my first briefing at the White House was this. Even if you feel stressed, if you feel pressure, keep your feet grounded on the ground and keep your spine stiff and nothing can blow you away. And of course it's physical, but it's also spiritual. Yes. Because what it means is stay true to who you are and your own values and who you know you are and don't let external forces try to blow you over. I love that. Thank you. Hi, Senator Booker. How are Good you? to see you again. Look at us all clean. We've showered. cleaned up since our <laughs> run this morning. Your parents were among the first black executives at IBM and very important people in your life. What is the biggest lesson you learned from them? I think that uh, James Baldwin's right, that children are never good at listening to their elders but they never failed to imitate them. Mm -hmm. And so they're just really good people who lived purpose-driven lives and made me and my brother feel as we were growing up the ridiculous blessings we had. Number one, to be the 4% of humanity to call yourself an American. But more importantly, especially as a black American, how blessed we were to get to where we were and how much of a debt my brother and I owed and that we had to find a way to pay it forward uh, because we could never pay it back. Now, one of the areas you've been pretty passionate about is your role on the Agriculture Committee, which would sh surprise as many people who would think, well, this guy was the mayor of Newark. He's a vegan. Yes. So tell me a little bit about why that's an area of passion for you. And what do people not know about how issues that hit that committee impact them? Every issue I think Americans care about intersects 
with our food. Food is the source of life. And we have a system that has become so corrupted by these large multinational corporations who don't care about independent family farmers, who don't care about farm workers, who don't care about the quality or health of our foods, who don't care about the longevity of the human species because we way overuse antibiotics. We have a system that drives down the cost of the happy meal that doesn't make us ultimately long-term happy in terms of our health and drives up the cost of the foods that are more healthy. We are a nation that was formed because we believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You can't have any of those unless your food system is vital and fresh and healthy. You have a friendship with Senator Tim Scott. You've yes. talked about someone you've said you loved. I, look, I have friendships with Tim Scott, Dan Sullivan. I can go through a lot of Republicans that I've formed legitimately good friendships here. And that's the way you get things done. It's not by vilifying or demonizing people you disagree with, but finding chords of common humanity. What should people who are intrigued by his presidential aspiration know about him? I think that as I look at this Republican field, he may be one of those people that is underestimated. In 2016 and 2020, you talked a lot about how you can't fight hate with hate uh, in regards to Donald Trump. You even said many times, I love him. I love you, Donald Trump. Do you still feel that way about well, him? The core of my spirituality comes from the simple idea, love your neighbor, love those who hate you. Mm -hmm. Never let somebody pull you so low as you uh, 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 to make you hate them. I voted to impeach the guy twice. I think he has committed crimes. So I, I don't give any sanction for anything that he's done. But how do you fight that? Well, history to me teaches very well. How did we fight in our country Bull Connor? Did Martin Luther King bring bigger dogs and bigger fire hoses? Or did he find a way when these elements of hate and bigotry and divisiveness, did he find a way to change the frequency? Because King said it right, that the problem today is not the vitriolic words and violent actions of the bad people only. It's the appalling silence and inaction of the good people. You've run for president once. Yes. You've now been in the Senate for a while. Yes. Are you a Senate lifer or are there other things you aspire to past I, this? I have found that the best way to make God laugh is to make plans for yourself. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Um, I love the job. Thank you, New Jersey. And we'll most likely run for re-election in 26. But um, we'll see what the future hopes. If I ran for president for a purpose, and one of that was healing our country, bringing us together again uh, to see a more common purpose and uh, common cause. And if that is still something in future presidential elections, I'll think about it again. But every day is precious, as you know, and uh, nothing tomorrow is promised. So I'm just really excited that I'm in a job that today I could do something to make a difference in the life of other people. And I think that we all have to realize that every day affords us that same privilege.